Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this special edition of NCSA Live. Uh, I am your regular host, Danny Koenig. I'm a director of regional recruiting here with NCSA. Today. You know, today we're joined by someone I'm really excited to catch up with. He uh, is with the football program at the University of Akron. Uh, he's working with the special teams group over there, and we're obviously going to pick his brain about the recruiting process. So I want to welcome uh, everybody to uh, Tony Calgene. Tony, how you doing? What's going on? Excited to have you, Coach. There's obviously a lot going on in the recruiting process. You know, you're you know with the football program at University of Akron, which uh, has been impacted by the recruiting process, just like everybody. And you guys are continuing to be impacted by the recruiting process because of the dead period uh, imposed by the NCAA that is soon going to be lifted. So certainly want to talk about that. But uh, you know, Coach, you've, you've been around. Like you've been at a lot of different levels. So uh, just briefly, give us a quick rundown of your uh, accolades. Yeah, I mean, I, I started off uh, coaching high school football in Jersey, so I know what it's like to be on the side of, you know, trying to get your players recruited. I mean, I was, I was a player myself, went through the recruitment process, and then uh, started off at the NAIA level, um, which actually isn't NCAA, um, but it's a whole other, uh, just, you know, place where kids can go play sports, uh, their scholarships, all that stuff. Uh, then got to the Division Three level, um, where uh, I was at a very, very high academic school in Franklin and Marshall, uh, and then moved to Ursinus, which is very similar, um, and now here at Akron at the FBS level. So I feel like I've gotten it from all different perspectives and uh, every angle that you can. And that's valued perspective, and it's certainly something I want to talk to. Uh, I coached high academic D3 as well, lost a handful of recruits to Franklin and Marshall. That's just how it goes, right? So um, certainly know where you're coming from, but you know, now you're you know, first year with Akron, obviously you're kind of been thrown into the fire here because things are pretty crazy with recruiting and that's what we want to focus on. So I know you're pretty active with social. I know you're pretty tapped into what's going on here, but we want to get your perspective on some of the things that you've seen here with the recruiting in the last year. So first and foremost, you know, we're, we're trying to help these families better understand what they can be doing, but What's your process right now at the University of Akron, the football program? How are you guys going about recruiting right now? Yeah, I think the frustrating thing is, you know, we're, we're used to being out on the road. We're used to having junior days and all that stuff. So you're getting in front of these kids and you're, you're getting to know them personally. Um, but I think one of the things that, that COVID's done and, you know, will what teams will do going forward is the use of Zoom, FaceTime, all that stuff where, you know, uh, in my process, you know, maybe I, I started FaceTiming kids in December, January, closer to uh, to, to decision time. Uh, I think now that's that's happening, you know, as soon as you can. Um, you know, we were FaceTiming with kids in September and all, all throughout uh, the spring, especially when they allowed coaches to uh, start to FaceTime kids. Um, so you, you do feel like you're getting to know the kids. You're having a lot of conversations, uh, which I think will be really, really positive you know, maybe save, save coaches some time on the road, not having to go into schools just to, you know, shake coaches' hands and stuff like that, but hop on a Zoom, hop on a FaceTime and talk to coaches, talk to players. Um, so uh, for all the bad that ha has happened, I, I do think that uh, a lot of good has happened and, and will help change the process going forward. Yeah, um, I do want to acknowledge, because I didn't do it earlier, that we are live today on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We will be taking some questions. So uh, if you have some questions here for Coach Cal Jean, I uh, would love to get to those here towards the end of the show. But, um, Coach, I want to kind of step back a little bit. You know, you talked a little bit about FaceTime, um, how recruiting has changed a little bit for you guys. And it may have changed recruiting forever, but when the whole world shut down last spring and you guys are going into the summer, what's happening behind closed doors? Like, what conversations are you guys having about how to push the recruiting process forward. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, there was a big, big, you know, we spent a lot of time evaluating film where, you know, you, you're gonna spend that time and you're, you're watching, you wanna see somebody kind of catch your eye, um, but maybe a couple more guys got longer looks uh, because of all the extra time. So uh, while I, I know a lot of guys weren't able to get to camps and, and do some of those things, uh, film eval was really, really huge. Uh, obviously, there was kind of a, a big push during the summer for a lot of like virtual combines and stuff like that, which I think, again, will be really, really valuable going forward where you know, we don't need to get you to campus to find out that you're you're actually 6'4 and, you know, 240 pounds. Like you can film yourself being measured and, and step on the, the scale and send a picture, send a video or whatever, um, but help 
make that process go a little bit faster. So uh, I, I think that's kind of, you know, what we dove into, what a lot of people dove into. And as I said, I, I think we'll change the process going forward. Yeah. Um, and that's an interesting point because we were kind of professing this, that look, video is going to be key. You know, these coaches can't see you in person. They still want to be able to evaluate what you're capable of doing. And the big question we got is like, well, if we're not playing, we're not going to tournaments or camps. How do I get some video? So did you guys see anything interesting coming from athletes through video that you maybe didn't expect? Mm, I don't know if there was anything that, you know, we were like blown away by. I think there's a lot of stuff where, you know, in camp, you're there, you, you want to work with the kids, uh, but you also want to see like just how they move. You know, you saw them on film and you're like, okay, like this kid has certain instincts or, you know, whatever attribute that makes them valuable to us. Um, and in camp, you're getting to see that. We were able to look at, you know, guys would bench press in their backyard or they're, they're running different like foot speed drills and stuff like that. So you can, you can start to see those things. Um, I don't think that will replace the the camp circuit going forward because coaches still want to work with players. Um, but I, I'd say like the, the virtual combines, um, not that there's anything revolutionary, but I, as I said, I just think that's going to make the, the process a little bit faster going forward. Yeah, I mean, you had to figure out something. And like I said, some of this might be permanent. You know, it's just a little bit easier. You're going to save a little bit of money by, um, you know, doing this virtually and you know, ultimately, maybe tease out some of those kids that aren't so interested before you bring them to campus and spend a lot of time. So um, I think that's a really good perspective. Obviously, everybody had to figure it out and they needed to figure it out in their own way. But, you know, as we move forward and you kind of, talk, you know, things are starting to open back up. And that must have been pretty exciting for you guys a couple of months ago when the NCAA lifted that. Again, you guys are at that Division One program and you guys are still under sanctions or restrictions from the NCAA saying you can't mm -hmm. contact these kids. But what are you guys looking forward to, you know, coming up in the next couple of months? I mean, honestly, for us, you know, our, our board it was really kind of like filled out by the time I got here. So, you know, that 22 board, the, there's a ton of names, there's a ton of valuations. And it's from there kind of finding out, OK, who, who are these kids? Uh, what are they about? You know, what motivates them? Uh, are they a fit for our program? Uh, and less of the kind of football questions, because as I said, like the, the staff spent so much time watching film and, you know, comparing notes and, and all that stuff. So. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that, uh, I, I just lost my, 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 my train of thought. No, 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 you're so. good. You're good. <laughs> Again, we're here with uh, coach Cal Jean. He is at the university of Akron football program, uh, working with the special teams over there. So, you know, I think this is an important point to call out coach, because I don't get to talk about it that much. I was a first year coach at a bunch of different schools. Um, that first year is tough, right? And in a second, I'll get this as a perspective, as a, as a recruit, right? But when you're in your first year, you know, you're just trying to learn kids' names, their background, what they're good at, how to coach them, right? So there's also this added layer. Like you said, you walk into the office and they've already got their board set up with the athletes that are recruiting. So not only do you have to just get to know the team to be able to affect and, you know, and have an impact there immediately, you got to figure out the recruiting side of things. So what that means for recruits out there, and there were times where I would be, you know, getting, uh, you know, questionnaires or emails from recruits, and it just necessarily couldn't be a priority at that time. Not that I didn't care about it, but I am really just focused on what's in front of me. Maybe I started at the end of the summer. You know, I'm just trying to learn kids' names and what they're about. So um, if you're that recruit and you are reaching out to a coach, just be a little bit mindful about some of the other things they might have going on. You know, don't get discouraged. If you're coach, you know, reaching out to Coach Cal Jean in his first year and he's not right on top of it getting back to you, he's got a few other things going on. So it's just part of the process. And obviously you're still learning as you go, but like I said, you got this crazy good background and, and you know, you know, about this process and what you need to do moving forward. So let's talk about that aspect, you know, as a recruit, because we want to be able to give them some insight into what you want and kind of how you go about your business. Coach, how do you prefer Kyle, or excuse me, how do you prefer that prospective student athletes get in touch with you? Yeah. So I, I think, you know, I think it's really, really important that your process is going to start whenever you have varsity film. Um, I, I don't think sending JV film, eighth grade film uh, is going to get you looked at or, or taken seriously. So uh, I think as soon as you have varsity film, you need to go and talk to your coach uh, about, hey, like this is kind of my intentions. I want to play college football somewhere or college sports somewhere. Uh, this is my dream school. And like, where do you think I, I, I fit in? Where can I play? Um, because most schools are going to they're going to recruit in like a three to five hour radius. Um, so you have the same college coaches going in to see the same high school coaches every year. They're building relationships with those high school coaches. Um, your high school coach is going to know. 
And they're going to be able to kind of direct you. And if they feel comfortable, give a recommendation to the coach. So, you know, so much of our process is based off of what high school coaches are saying. And that's kind of, again, like how we're going to start building our board. Um, sure, you can get on different lists, go to different camps. You can, you know, email or, or send a tweet, you know, all that stuff. Um, but at the higher levels, like, especially like power five, like there's so many people working at that level. Like the process is already moving, um, for like group of five, like us, like we know about a lot of kids, uh, and we're looking for some more, but as you go down the levels, like you're getting more coaches that have to do the legwork. So, um, if you're going to shoot a coach, an email or a, a coach, a, a DM, you're going to have much more success with, you know, FCS, D2, D3, and as you go down the level, like that's where you're going to have more success. Um, you know, I have 24,000 followers. I get hundreds of DMs a day. It's really, really difficult for me to stay in touch with all those kids. So really, I'm going to our board, seeing which ones are messaging me, and then I'm going to respond back to those guys uh, because I know that they already are, are valued by Akron. So uh, it's just kind of how the, the process is. You know, there are a million kids playing high school football. Uh, and there's only so many coaches uh, out there to uh, to recruit those guys. So there's a couple things I want to call out there. First and foremost, if you're a prospective student athlete, you want to go compete in college, like you got to raise your hand. And and coaches sitting here telling us, you know, at the high school level, go to your coach. Say this is something I'm thinking about. You know, is that possible for me? What level do you think that's possible? So just having that conversation, you got to speak up for yourself. But, you know, the other thing that I wanted to point out here is that coach really is hearing from a lot of athletes. And that's not uncommon. I did the same as a Division One recruiting coordinator. You're just inundated with a lot of communication because it's so easy these days. So, Coach, you know, I know you, you talked about the importance of video. That's going to be king pretty much for most sports across the board always. But what is something that an athlete can do to stand out to you to get you to respond to them? Uh, yeah, I think, like you said, really, really good film. Again, like a, a high school uh, recommendation coming in or a high school coach's recommendation coming in early. Um, but if if it's going to be nothing else, you know, I think approaching and having like a great opening letter is really, really good or opening note. Um, some guys write like, yo, dog, and some guys write like a novel. Um, but I think if you give them all the pertinent information, like your name, school, GPA, SAT, ACT, position um and then like any like outstanding quality like you know maybe you're six seven or maybe you run you know a, a sub 100 or a, a sub 11 100 um those are going to be the things that catches co co uh, catch coaches eyes um otherwise it, you know you're just another message in, in a very very long inbox of messages now, obviously, we're very focused on Division One, and um, you know, it tends to be kind of ESPN buzz about what's going on. But you also coached at the Division Three level, and so did I. And you know, those athletes aren't necessarily always going to be top priority for everybody, but they're going to be top priority for somebody. It's just a slightly different process. So, can you talk a little bit about some of the differences you've experienced at the Division One level versus when you were recruiting at the Division Three level? Yeah, absolutely. Like, like I said, like there's so many, or you kind of touched on it. There, there's so many services your 247 sports, your rivals that comb through the, the nation and are telling you, okay, this kid's a, a four star, this kid's a three star. And I, I think pretty recently they just came out with uh, like the, the numbers where, you know, this is how many uh, five star went to the NFL, this is how many four star, this is how many three star, this is how many no star. And it was very, very accurate. So uh, those people are doing a really, really good job. Um, a lot of the guys that we are recruiting are somewhere on those services. If they're not you know, ranked or whatever, like their name is somewhere there. Um, for the, the lower levels, like NCSA was probably my biggest tool that I, I used. Like we went on there and like, that's how we gathered names. Um, and from either getting names from there or just emailing coaches, cold, cold emailing coaches uh, that were in our, our region. Um, but yeah, it's, as I said, coaches at that level are doing a lot of legwork. And if you can find a place that you're really interested in, like those coaches are going to respond because they're trying to find the, the right fit where, you know, as I said, so much of our process here is already curated for us. Yeah, uh, no, and I appreciate the plug, Coach. Again, we're here with uh, Coach Cal Jean. He's uh, with football program at the University of Akron, just kind of giving us some insight here. So, 
you know, I think you bring up a good point and, and fair or not coach, uh, you know, the world's not fair and we hear this all the time, but um, your division three type kids, they got to work a little bit harder at recruiting because they're not going to rise to the top. You know, they're not naturally just going to be seen in some crazy camp, but at the same time, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not capable. And those athletes, they certainly have preferences. You're going to catch a lot of those high academic kids. You know, you were at Franklin and Marshall High Academic School, those kids that want to study at high level, um, you know, go on and, and be veterinarians or go to med school, those sorts of things. So, you know, if you're out there and you're not, you know, being prospected, you're not in front of college coaches, don't panic, right? It just means that you need to kind of structure yourself in a little bit different way. You need to be a little bit more proactive um, and put yourself out there and know what you want and, and be able to find those schools and open up lines of communication with college coaches. So um, I think that's a really good point that you bring up, Coach. Um, for you and your experiences, because I know in your first year, and I know it's coming at you quickly, for you as a coach, what's the biggest difference moving from Division three to Division one? I? I would say, honestly, just the amount of eyes and hands that, that are around to help. Um, you know, when I was at Division three, I was a recruiting coordinator, a special teams coordinator, as a linebacker's coach. So there's already a, a lot of my plate um, and we probably have, you know, six coaches in the office full time. So uh, we're trying to bring our players, our recruits, the best possible experience. Um, and I mean, there's no nothing that we do at Akron that's any different than what we did at Ursinus. But the difference is we have 10 full time coaches, another you know 15 uh, off the field staff. So there's just more hands and, and, and more eyes to help out. But uh, I think in your recruiting process, if you're finding a place that you're comfortable with and, and you're, you're happy with and you feel like you can be developed on the field and off the field, uh, then that's going to lead to a great experience. It's not going to be running out onto the, you know, whatever stadium. Uh, that, that's not going to make the difference at the end of the day. It's going to be the, the people you're around uh, and the, the attention that, that you received while you were there. Yeah. Um, so I want to give you a scenario here. I'm interested to hear, hear what you have to say. Let's say there's a candidate out there, a prospective student athlete, that's going to be a really good fit for Akron, but that athlete is not on the radar. You don't know who they are. They haven't done anything in recruiting. You know, maybe you've been to a handful of camps and, you know, they're coming into their junior year or maybe let's just say it's senior year, right? What's the best thing an athlete can do to get on your radar? What steps can these athletes take forward if they're a little bit behind to really impact themselves? Man, that's tough. Uh, I think probably just have a, a really, really explosive senior year. Um, and again, like have a, a, a great, great coach's recommendation. Uh, you know, our board at whatever position is pretty filled right now. Uh, so in order to escalate to the, the, the top of that, that board, uh, you're going to have to do some really, really fantastic things. So um, I, I think just proving that you belong, you know, getting out to, to camps, uh, and taking taking the coaching, uh, showing that you're a really really great athlete, uh, that you can you know, respond to just adversity um, is is the best way. Yeah, um, and that brings up kind of another point. You know, I, well, there's two things here. I don't want to harp on the whole like if you're behind, it's done and over. Coach is sitting here saying like, look, we've been working with his prospects. You know, we've talked to their coaches. We put a lot of time and effort into what's on our board right now. You know, a newbie kind of comes in and undercuts what's going on. Maybe you give that kid the time of day, maybe you don't. But there are certain things that you can be doing in the recruiting process to help you stand out. And you kind of alluded to it, right? Uh, you know, that hustle factor. Um, sort of, you know, in the coaching world, we would call it intangibles, right? The things that don't show up on a stat sheet or in a video, the things that athletes can do. So for you, you, know, you want to work with a kid for four years that uh, has kind of got it, whatever it is, but that kid that you're really going to lean on. What is that for you, some of those intangibles for you as a coach when you're recruiting? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think, you know, part of what, what we have to do is we have to find out who this kid's going to be in three or four years. Um, we're not necessarily getting that, that blue chip that's going to walk out there day one and just start from day one um, and then be ready for the NFL. So uh, we're, we're trying to get to like the nitty gritty of, of this guy's character. Um, so we ask a lot of questions about their, their leadership. Uh, we'll, we'll ask hypothetical questions. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll ask like, what's their why? Why are they playing football? Like, why are you going to continue to to do this when things get really, really tough? Um, so it, it, it's a matter of finding out who they're going to be um, and, and kind of what you were, you were uh, talking about before, you know, if we do have, you know, our, our board set um, and then all of a sudden somebody comes in way more athletic, great, great player. 
uh, are they immediately going to go to the top of the board? They might get on the board, but they're not going to go to the top because of all the, the intangible information that we've already found out about some of the guys that, that we've made contact with. So I think it's really, really important for recruits to make contact uh, and then stay in contact with the, the, the programs that are showing them love. Um, the idea that you're going to pull out a, you know, a, a scholarship in the bottom of the ninth is really, really difficult, and it doesn't happen a whole lot. Uh, I, I've told plenty of kids that you know the kids that are getting walk-on opportunities from us are kids that have been with us the entire process. They just didn't get the scholarship because there was two other scholarship players in front of them. But we recruited them just as hard as we were recruiting the scholarship players. So if you're not getting that right now, uh, then you need to look for more programs to talk to. Yeah, expand your list, maybe look at some lower levels or be prepared to put in a lot of work, right? You're, if you're behind, if you haven't been walking in step with the coaches at the University of Akron or any of the schools you're interested in or doing, uh, you got to make up some ground. And even then, some doors do close. That's just the reality of this business at the end of the day. Um, and like you said, it's about relationship building and knowing who you're going to be working with for the next four years. And that takes time. So if you are behind in the recruiting process and you think you got a shot, just reach out to us at NCSA. We'd love to work with you guys, you know, trying to get you back on track and help you explore your opportunities. Again, we're here uh, with Coach Cal Jean out of the University of Akron football program. Uh, Coach, I do want to get to some questions. I'm always interested to, interested to see what we've got from the people. All right, this one from Mickey. How are you handling the number of athletes in the transfer portal? Coach, there's been a lot of that going on. And the current athletes with additional eligibility and then balancing that with new recruits coming out of high school. So uh, let me just preface by saying this. The NCAA has granted current college seniors an additional year of eligibility. That also comes with scholarships. So the scholarships may be tied up and we're starting to hear who's staying, who's going, those sorts of things. But invariably, it's affected the recruiting process in particular for our current high school seniors and high school juniors. So. Coach, how are you navigating the recruiting process with that additional year of eligibility? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we're keeping as many players as wanted to, to stick around. Uh, around, um, We're still planning on bringing in our, our, our next class, our 21 class. And then in every class, you usually leave a couple of scholarships for transfers. Uh, I think the thing that, you know, like, so things aren't really changing for us. We're, we're kind of lucky that we're, we're getting another year with some of our more developed guys. I think the, the thing that's going to be frustrating for a lot of recruits and, and a lot of guys in the transfer portal is there's just not a lot of opportunities going around. Uh, the NCAA only allows us 25 scholarships at max per year. We may not even have that that that, that, that 25. Um, so, uh, you know, when you bring in, let's say, 22 freshmen, okay, you got three scholarships left, hypothetically. Um, let's say five guys transfer out. Well, we can only still bring in three guys on scholarship. We don't get those extra five back because of the yearly uh, rule. So um, it, it has hamstrung some teams. Uh, there's been times that you know we're looking at our roster and we're like, man, like we're losing more than we can bring in. Uh, but everyone's dealing with that, unfortunately. So uh, there's a lot of guys sending a transfer portal right now without a home, unfortunately. Coach, spilling industry secrets about scholarships. I like it. Okay, cool. No, and that's a good point. It's, it's been tough. Uh, it, it does affect things. Um, I don't know, Coach. I mean, is it stay put and look at your options if this is something you're thinking about? Is that kind of the message? I think if you are really, really thinking about going in the transfer portal, you have to have a great relationship with your current, the current staff that you're playing for and let them know, like, hey, like, you know, I'm interested in looking – but don't burn that bridge because, as I said, there's so many guys that are, are sitting in there right now, and there's hundreds more every every single day, and there's just not enough scholarships to go around. So, like, if you're walking away from a scholarship or something, um, I, I would definitely definitely think about it twice. Think about it. Yeah, I got you. Appreciate that. Um, let's see what else we got in the way of questions. This is from Livy, Livy Self. Are you saying that if the athlete isn't already on your board, you wouldn't correspond with them? I don't think that's what you're saying, Coach, but I'll let you speak for yourself. Uh, I mean, I, I would talk to a lot of kids. Um, I, I try to get back to as many as possible. Uh, but I think it really just depends on the, the coach. Uh, you know, there are some coaches that have uh, a lot of time and are, are able to spend more time responding to, co uh, to players. Uh, and then, you know, there are some that, like, I mean, they just have their DMs closed. So uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I'm going to respond to them uh, if, if I can. 
um, whether or not they get onto the recruiting board is a, is a different different conversation. We talk about it a lot. Um, there are just some harsh truths about the recruiting process, you know, and it's again, not that you're not willing to engage with these athletes, but they're kind of like low priority if they come in a little bit late. Right. And I talk a lot about starting this process early. I talk about it with parents in person over the phone. I talk about it with high school coaches, you know, the idea that they're only a sophomore, you know, they don't need to do anything until they're a junior blows my mind. I can't wrap my head around it. Or parents that like, I can see them hearing what I'm saying, but they're not really listening, right? Look, your kid is good. They need to get going their freshman year because these coaches are recruiting in your mm -hmm. class, even though they can't get back to you and the majority of the conversations are happening in your junior year, doors may close, right? And that just is the reality of it, that you have to get after this early. Even if you end up at that high academic division three, right? If that's just the path and that's what ends up happening, cool. But you gotta leave the door open, right? So. You know, this process is going to start early. Coach, when's the when's the earliest you're going to start prospecting for for a student athlete? Uh, the earliest that we'll we'll watch kids. I mean, we have freshmen's film sitting in our our inbox right now, and we're starting to evaluate that now. Uh, and the one thing I will say uh, to your point is, you know, even at Division three level, like it's very very competitive. There were plenty of times at Franklin and Marshall it's and Sinus, yep, that we said no to kids uh, because we either had a full class or something like that. So. Uh, the, the, the process is moving faster at every level now. Yeah, I think it used to just be like you could roll up to any D3 and basically walk on and they're going to start recruiting, you know, last semester of your senior year. Like I was recruiting sophomores at the Division three level. I mean, it's just and that's for swimming and diving. I mean, it's just crazy. You know, they have more resources. You know, there's a little bit more respect. It's gotten a lot better, too. So, you know, again, everybody on this, if you're watching this later, listen to coach. Right. This starts early. You were hearing it directly from him, not from us. You know, they are starting to evaluate freshmen at the University of Akron on that football program. And by the time they're juniors, you know, they've got that board up. They're deep into conversations. They know who those people are. Not saying that you can't be considered if you're rolling up in your junior year. You just have to understand that these coaches have started to build relationships with these athletes and their families long before you're showing up. And they're going to respect that. So uh, let's see what else we got here from the people. Um, does it help if an athlete is coming with outside scholarships already banked, if the school has limited sports scholarship money remaining. Coach, how do you fold in merit money to your offers? Yeah, so at the University of Akron and at all FBS, uh, we have 85 scholarships for 85 spots. So there's no breaking up scholarships or anything like that. Um, if you're going to come in as a walk-on, uh, you can have your outside scholarships or whatever academic scholarships you qualify for. Um, but that's, you know, getting that outside scholarship with a potential athletic scholarship is more for FCS or, or division two level. Yeah. Um, there's all kinds of shirts out there, right? Gray shirts, red shirts, blue shirts, green mm -hmm. shirts. So um, all those mean something different. Not that you need to know what every one of those things are, but coach, is it possible in the scholarship side of things that you could potentially quote unquote, offer a kid a two and two, like say, Hey, if you can get this kind of merit money, get the academic scholarship for two years, we can revisit this and possibly get you on, on football scholarship for the next two. Absolutely. Okay. So good to know, right? You always have options out there. And even at the D3 level, you know, those coaches are tapped in with the financial aid team, the admissions department. Um, you know, I was having conversations with the Dean of admissions probably twice a year on behalf of the athletes I was recruiting say, Hey, what are their options at admission? Are they going to get in, um, you know, having conversations with financial aid, are they eligible for any kind of merit money? You know, trying to just be competitive with scholarship offering schools, and that's certainly part of it. I'm sure you've dealt with that a lot at Franklin and Marshall, too. Mm -hmm. um, it can be a little bit sensitive at some of those high academic schools where uh, they really just want kids to graduate and go on to grad school. So um, other questions here. From Brandon, my daughter is a freshman soccer player. Uh, keep in mind, girls soccer is a pretty accelerated recruiting timeline. What type of contact can she have with coaches this early in the process. So one good thing to note, uh, you know, we talk a lot about these coaches restrictions, um, not being able to contact athletes until a certain point, uh, but athletes can contact college coaches. That's a one way street that's always open um, and coaches are always looking for that kind of information. So uh, at NCSA, you can build a free online recruiting profile for exposure to college coaches. Coaches over here telling us they're already evaluating the video for freshmen just because they can't reach out to that freshman doesn't mean that they're not paying attention, right? So a huge part of that is just 
figuring out what's what's good for you, what you want to accomplish throughout this process, and then basically raising your hand. You know, hey, coach, find your program. I know I'm only a freshman. I'm starting to look at opportunities. I know you can't get back to me. You know, when can we have this conversation about me potentially playing for you? But, um, yeah, <laughs> coach, I don't know how familiar you are with women's soccer, but what's your suggestion for a freshman that's trying to engage in this process in an impactful way? Yeah, I mean, th that's the thing is like there's there's different rules for for each sports or each sport, um, what you can do is, again, like have their high school coach uh, reach out to, uh, to to the college coach. Uh, they set up a, a call time where your daughter can call that coach. And then maybe, you know, they have that conversation. The, the coach says, hey, you know, call me every week at this time or, you know, call me the 21st of every month uh, until, you know, your sophomore year or whenever uh, you're allowed to, to talk um, in, in soccer. So, uh, there are little ways around that. Uh, that's how we have conversations with sophomores uh, before uh, th that that time happens. More industry secrets being spilled here on MCSA Live. Well, uh, appreciate those questions, guys. Um, Coach, thank you so much for being here again. Uh, Coach Cal Jean, he's with the football program at the University of Akron, taking time out of his busy day. Uh, Coach, I know things are about to go crazy for you guys here, so I really do appreciate your time. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, y'all, we will um, be back regular Tuesday, 2 p.m. Central Time. Uh, be back with NCSA. We are discussing camps next week. So this conversation is a really good segue into that conversation next week, Tuesday, about camps and how to make that impactful coming up this summer. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a frenzy. So we want to help you guys kind of plan for that and get the most out of it. But, uh, again, I want to thank Coach Cal Jean for being here with us. Uh, again, Danny Koenig, Director of Recruiting here at NCSA. Hopefully we'll see you guys again very soon. Take care.